perfect. Hello again, pinball people and arcade aficionados. Welcome to another edition of Pinball Repair and Restoration. In this episode, we're going to keep working on our two classic Bally Blackjack pinball machines. We've completed the visual inspection and planning phase of our project, and now we're going to move on to repairing some of the minor mechanical issues with the machine and strip the top of the playfield for cleaning. When you start taking things apart, it's not uncommon to encounter some previously unknown issues which need to be addressed. Pinball machines have a lot of moving parts and things will tend to break down over time. There are also a lot of places on the playfield which won't get clean during a standard clean, wax, and re-rubber, so a clean playfield can start looking really dirty when you pull off the plastics and really dig into it. Overall though, it should be a fairly straightforward playfield restoration job, so let's get started. I've got one of the two Bally Blackjack machines up on legs now and ready to start testing everything determine what we're going to have to repair on this machine. These games were sold to me as being working games, but we'll see about that as we go through. Just a basic visual inspection seems like everything is fairly decent. Uh, the only things I have really noticed so far are this loose capacitor. We'll have to fix that. I also noticed one of the connectors on the rectifier board looks a little burnt. Not only is the Molex housing burnt, but the pin itself looks a little brown, so these might be the original pins or really old pins. I also noticed that somebody's soldered the the pins to the wires. I don't know if these are the original pins and they've just decided to solder that or what the case is there, but you can't really see in great detail through the little hole there, but uh, the pin's looking a little brown. It looks like they just sanded the finish off of these to try to get a little more life out of it. So in the meantime, for our basic troubleshooting and just getting the game up and running, uh, I'll leave it as is, but that's something I'll probably have to address. So naturally, the first thing that you want to do is plunge the ball and hit the flippers, but uh-oh this flipper mechanically there's some kind of issue here I can feel it's binding it just does not feel good so we'll have to take a look at that this one on this side seems fairly responsive let's just maybe hit a ball and yeah that side seems okay we'll probably end up doing some work here anyway uh, at least replacing the coil sleeves and we'll take a closer look and see what we end up doing there this one for sure though problems. The next thing I immediately noticed trying to play this game, it would launch the ball fine and you could, obviously it has this flipper issue, but then once it drains, nothing happens. It doesn't launch the ball again. So we'll have to look under the play field at that switch and that whole mechanism under there and see what's going on with that. Now I've lifted the play field to just take a look at that trough switch and I notice the bottom is just filled with old junk, so the person that sold these to me as quote-unquote restored games didn't really do such an awesome job on the restoration if they've just left all the parts kind of in the bottom here. But anyway, looking at our switch, we can see that here's the switch, but the, the plate and the metal wire which would go through here and ultimately make this switch contact move when the ball is in the trough is completely missing. So I took a look down in the bottom of the game through all this stuff, as you'd expect maybe it's in there, and sure enough this I think is the one. If it's not for that it's certainly something that should be installed in the machine. So. We'll just take a closer look at the playfield and see where this might go. I'm, I'm hoping this is the one for the ball trough, but I can't really tell just immediately looking at it. As I've been looking over this playfield, I'm starting to realize that it needs a little bit more work than I was originally anticipating. So I think what I'll do with this one is I'll just throw it into the rotisserie and that'll make my life a lot easier. It's a little bit of time to get it mounted up and stuff, so I probably wouldn't have done that if I was just doing some basic repairs, but We've got things like the pop bumper skirts are broken. I'll have to replace those. I'll probably replace the bodies too. They're kind of old and beat up. A lot of the lamps were just kind of dim. They looked like they were fairly old lamps, so I'll have to replace probably all the lamps throughout the whole game. We also have the issue we already noticed with this 
trough switch being completely missing. Also the flipper, I, I checked this out, the coil stop is actually loose and there's a screw missing. So all that stuff's going to be a bit of work. I'm going to have to work on the top side of the playfield and the bottom side of the playfield. So let's get it mounted in the rotisserie and we'll dive into it. Before I mount the playfield in the rotisserie, I'd like to just take the apron off. Usually that's the only thing I have to take off before mounting it. It's a good idea to just get in here and take a look at this uh, ball launch mechanism because once the apron's back on, uh, this is going to be something that pe most people aren't even going to think about until something breaks. So the linkage looks okay. It's a little bit loose. The whole thing physically is a little loose. I'll replace this coil sleeve. I'll take a look at this plunger and this link and see. Seems like it's working okay. I'll probably still end up replacing the coil sleeve for sure. And possibly this link. And we can see we've got quite a bit of wear in that link. I should have one of these. I'll just replace this and then we won't have to worry about this. If this were to break, if I sold this game to someone or something like that and this were to break, it could cause a big problem. So it's a cheap enough part, I'll just drop it in there. I don't even necessarily need to take the apron off to mount the playfield into the rotisserie, but it's a pain to get the apron off. Uh, it's pretty much impossible actually once it's mounted in the rotisserie. So. That's why I take that off first. I don't have to worry about that later. These would be a pain to get off as well, and you know, any of these brackets that are on the end here, but these shouldn't need to come off. Now I have the play field in the rotisserie. It's nice to have the rotisserie at a height so we can actually have the play field connected to the rest of the game and have it boot up and play a game and run through the diagnostics and all that sort of stuff. So I've got it just sitting here in the attract mode. It's nice to be able to just have easy access to the top and the bottom of the playfield. So I'll have to decide what order I'm going to do the repairs. Typically the way I like to do it is repair all of the mechanisms and everything on the underside of the playfield before I tackle the top of the playfield, cleaning it, replacing the rubbers and that sort of stuff. The order isn't really going to matter, but I like to do it that way so basically all the dirty stuff like underneath the playfield can be kind of dirty. Get that out of the way first. And then when you're dealing with your new rubbers and your clean playfield surface, you don't have to go back and be touching the bottom of the dirty playfield and possibly bring the dirt up to the top. Now you might be saying, well, you should the bottom of the playfield should be cleaned and you shouldn't have dirt there and stuff like that. And may, maybe that's true, but many, many cases you're just going to have some dirt under there or black that black soot that's typical with pinball and get that on your fingers and then you don't want to have that on your new rubbers. Here's the parts play field that I have kicking around, which I'm going to use for some of the parts. It's got the trough switch. It's pretty rare that a game would be completely missing that, so I'll just use this one. We also have the red stand-up target here, which I'll use. It's kind of a shame to have to part out these things sometimes, but this one basically I acquired exactly as you see it loose from the machine, the playfield art is totally thrashed. The plastics are in nice shape, I might pull those off and uh, sell them to somebody who's restoring one of these games. Some of the caps, this one's beat up, this one's cracked. The thing that really makes this something that's just going to be a parts playfield is the fact that these drop target mechanisms are gutted out for whatever reason. There's some stuff missing but there's also some good stuff left. We've got some flipper base plates, a bunch of coils, the parts that I'm going to need for this game, and possibly several others. So at least the parts are going to good use. Well, I pulled the switch actuator thing off of the parts play field, and I realized that this one that I found in the bottom of the cabinet was actually the correct one. And it looks like what happened is at some point the wire probably broke, which isn't that uncommon. Someone tried to use like a paper clip or something here to fashion a new one, but it just didn't really work that great. It's not that straight going through these holes, so it's not going to move smoothly. So what I'll probably do is just stick this one into the game that I'm working on. I'll drop this one back on the parts play field, and then if I do actually need this, um, this piece here will come in handy, and then I'll just basically duplicate what they did here, but use a wire that's not all bent weird like this one. Here's the part installed in the playfield. I adjusted the switch slightly so it closes nicely just as this is coming down. I'll flip the playfield over and start a game and run a ball through here a few times and just make sure everything's okay. 
and then we'll move on to the next thing. So everything seems to be working fine with this. We can see that the, the ball launch mechanism is a little bit weak. I have the play field on an angle slightly here and it's still able to get over this hump, but just generally it seems a little weak. So replacing the coil sleeve and probably this link will make that a little bit stronger. Here's the switch that I'm going to use from the parts play field. It's kind of a pain to get out. It had this light socket here behind it, keeping it from coming out, which was stapled in. And there's our switch. It's not broken. It looks like it's in decent shape. A little bit of a wear line on it. I'll just clean it up and it'll match the rest of the play field in terms of wear and stuff. So it'll look good. Here's the broken target and the replacement. They're basically exactly the same. I've got the replacement target installed. Looks a lot better. I have a game started and everything seems to be working fine. Next I think I'll just disassemble the top of the play field. I'll take the plastics off, remove the rubbers, remove all the posts, remove the pop bumper caps, the lane guides, I'll pull off the spinner, basically just remove everything from the top of the play field. Then I think I'll just go through the rest of the mechanical repairs and I can start cleaning up the top of the play field, clean the plastics and just reinstall everything. Then I'll, as I'm doing that, um, I'll, I'll fix up these pop bumpers. What I'll probably do is before I clean the play field, I'll just disassemble these and that'll give me a little more room to get under here and stuff like that since I'm going to disassemble these completely anyways and replace the skirts and the bodies. Here's a look at the play field midway through the disassembly. We can see that it's pretty dirty in areas that wouldn't typically get clean just through regular cleaning. We can tell that it's been a long time since this play field has had a complete strip down and clean and wax like we're going to do in this video. So I'll go a little further with it. I think given that I have it in the rotisserie, I'll probably drop the stand-up targets. I'll drop these switches. Uh, I'm going to fix up these pop bumpers, so I'll completely remove these. And that'll give me basically just the flat play field. There will be a few things remaining. I think I'll leave the, the rollovers and just kind of clean these up in place on this one. I'll remove the flipper bats. But that's really the best way to get the nicest result is to just to uh, remove this stuff. You could try to clean around it, but ultimately it's probably going to end up being more work to just try to clean around these switches. These ones will be notorious for slicing your skin and stuff while you're cleaning in here. So that's a problem. When you have the play field installed in the machine, uh, it's a little more troublesome to remove this kind of stuff and reinstall it. You have to lift it and set it down and stuff like that. And here is another little issue that I found as I was going to remove some of these switches. This one, the diode actually is broken here, so I'll just re-solder that, but those are the types of little things that are nice to find when you actually go to those lengths where you strip the playfield completely down and give a good inspection really to the whole thing. That's it for another edition of Pinball Repair and Restoration. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you are a super fan, go ahead and click that notification button and I'll see you in the next one.